Hey all, Russ here, RV TV. Welcome, welcome to the channel. You know that opening song is called On My Way Home. And uh, it's kind of fitting, you know, because I'm home. Yay. And it, what a trip. Can you believe it? We did it. My goodness. All summer long. This is going to be a top 10 of uh, picks from the videos I did through the summer. And I'm also going to include that trip I did uh, in June, going out to Oklahoma and back. Might as well, because that's really part of the summer. So we'll have the virtual vacation and then also the 2020 summer travel. It's going to be in this video here. And I'm going to pick out 10, and basically it's 10 places that I feel I'd go back to. And because some of these stops I had been there before and it was just part of the nature of the beast what an adventure to travel in a pandemic <laughs> I mean it once you got used to it uh, it was fine and it was very safe too we'll get into that later you know I met so many people along the way got to see a lot of sites that I'd never seen before and that was really cool too so what we're going to use, we'll use the, actually the video selection on the channel here. And we'll start picking them out. Start talking about them. All right, let's get busy. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, first off, before we get going, I want to personally thank and do a huge shout out. Not only everyone that watched, thank you, thank you, thank you. But also the people that supported RVR TV through this Buy Me a Cup of Coffee app. The Amazon store, the Teespring store where you buy t-shirts and coffee mugs, uh, the PayPal, all of it. This summer would not have happened without that. And I just can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, here we go. Let's get into the videos right here. Let's scroll down, look at all these. <laughs> it's unbelievable that I went this far. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right, so anyway, let's get down here. This is back where I started out, and we went out to Oklahoma. This was in June. Now, my mindset back then after going through April and May was, how far can I travel? What's going to be open? You know, it was just a, a little bit of a challenge to decide where, how, what, who. <laughs> anyway, we just took off. I was going to go see family, so I went up through Seligman. Grand Canyon, of course, San Francisco Peaks, Walnut Canyon, the Ghost Towns, Meteor Crater, of course. See, a lot of this I had filmed before. And then when we got into New Mexico, right here, a lot of restrictions. Cadillac Ranch, that was a huge disappointment. I'd been there when the cars looked real, not all spray painted. So, but one of my favorite picks... I'm going to call it right here, is Paladuro Canyon. Now, this place was just out in the middle of the panhandle of Texas. Let's get in it. Let me get up here to a good shot. Right there. Paladuro uh, Canyon. I mean, this canyon, it's second in size to the Grand Canyon. Campgrounds, all kinds of neat stuff down in here. Uh, this was definitely one to go back to for sure. If you ever get out in Texas, I highly recommend Paladero Canyon, Texas State Park. And they had overlooks and gift shops and all that. I didn't spend a lot of time there. You got to remember, I, I was uh, taken off in the middle of the heat. <laughs> so anyway, put this on your top 10 list. Paladero, Texas State Park. Okay, let's go back to the videos. Okay, moving on. Then went up there to the Stadford Space Museum. That was cool. The big old statue, Tex Randall. You know, Billy the Kid Museum. Now, that was neat. That was a cool place. And I was surprised it was open. And I think they were too. There was no one there. But uh, that was that little town there off uh, in Fort Sumner in uh, New Mexico going across uh, US 60. Here's another one, Abo Ruins. I mean, there's one that you could really explore. You're going across US 60, and this was heading back towards Arizona. Now, on the list, 
<laughs> I have to put this on the list. Pie Town, New Mexico. Let's open it up. Okay, here we are. We're at Pie Town, the gathering place. <laughs> Blueberry butterscotch pie in the middle of the desert. Now, you can't beat it. It's unique. There's RV camping. There's campgrounds there. Uh, once again, this is on the US 60. Uh, definitely on the top 10. I would go back there in a second just to explore that whole area. It's just a pretty area. You're right getting close to the Arizona border. And uh, you can also just, it's unique. It's a very unique stop. So definitely check out Pie Town, New Mexico. That's on the top 10. All right, back to the videos. Okay, after that, basically got back in Arizona, kind of hung out through the 4th of July. And once again, the decisions of where to go, what to go. That was a grueling couple weeks because I wasn't sure if I could pu even pull off a travel season the first part of July. Uh, because at that time, a lot of the national parks all that had not opened back up yet. I mean, it was so restrictive. And what's the use of going there if you can't see anything? You know, that was the bottom line. That You could travel there, sure. But what could you see once you got there? So anyway, it started opening up a little bit. I was daily, three times a day, wa watching the Internet and also the National Park Service uh, websites and all that. So here we started Flagstaff. That's that was the first video. Old Town Flagstaff right here. Sunset Crater was cool. Uh, the ancient ruins. This is going up uh, Highway 89. We're heading up out of Arizona. Heading up towards Utah. These two here, the National Monuments and the ruins, they were all tied together. Horseshoe Bend. Now here's one that... Uh, I would definitely give an honorable mention that was quite a hike that I had to take from the parking lot. <laughs> that's not the that's not one to visit if for the if you're not very fit. You got to hike quite a ways down there. On the list, on the top 10 list, Lake Powell the Glen Canyon Dam. My goodness. Let's check this one out. Glen Canyon Dam. Look at this thing. It was just massive in size. You had Lake Powell here. I mean, my goodness, what a gorgeous, gorgeous area. That is definitely one to go back to. The camp and the recreation areas, all of it. Once again, I was out in the middle of July. It was scorching hot when I was up there. 100 plus degrees. Not the ideal time of year to be going to Lake Powell in this area but once again we we're traveling in pandemic made the best of it but if you get a chance this is definitely on the top 10 glen canyon dam lake powell area and this is right on the arizona utah border okay let's keep going continuing on we left lake powell got into utah now i'm kind of lump some of these together because Utah itself is wow. I mean, just a wow factor of 10. Uh, the whole way up, that cave was kind of neat. That was a real tourist trap. But if you just kept going, the Red Canyon, go into Bryce, the scenic, uh, the, that scenic 12, that scenic byway, Highway 12, cutting across, Calf Creek Recreation Area, all of it. Capitol Reef, that whole section right there was just a wow factor. So I highly recommend, we'll give it an honorable mention, the Scenic Highway 12, Bryce, and all that part of Utah. Over the arches, it was so hot that day, I could, that was about the end of it. But on the top 10, once you leave arches, is this road here, this stretch of road. It's called the Scenic Byway 128. And you're over there in Moab, Utah. And let's open this up. Okay, here we are. I, once, I, I can't even describe how it was driving through here, the Scenic Byway 128. It was a few miles uh, to go up, but these 
cliff walls. There was all kinds of camping along this road here. And you go clear up, uh, it took me clear up to, uh, what was it, uh, Interstate 70. Because I was heading over to Colorado from here. But it was like driving through the Grand Canyon is the only way I could describe it. There's the Colorado River right there. All that water flows all the way down through Arizona. But it was just so unique, so beautiful. Uh, really, really enjoyed that drive. So if you get a chance, take this road. Scenic Byway, Highway 128. It's between I-70 and Moab, Utah. Okay, moving on. All right, from there, I kind of fast-tracked it through Colorado. There, It was hot. We're once again in the middle of summer. Ended up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. If you talk about old cowboy history, Cheyenne is it. The old Wild West. The train depot was cool. Got to travel some of the back roads. Then ended up, yay, in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Um, I can cluster some of these together. You had Custer, Keystone, Sturgis. <laughs> That's a different story there. State of Kickstands, Historic Deadwood, Spearfish Canyon. Now this drive here, this is a scenic drive in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And we're going to put this on the list. There's the shot of the waterfalls along this uh, road here. It, it was just, an, once again, another scenic byway highway. And uh, left Deadwood, traveled along through here, and ended up back at Spearfish. It's called Spearfish Canyon. Just one scenic drive. You got big trees, rock cliffs, water. Talk about gold mining. I'll guarantee you, if you could find a place you could pan. <laughs> I bet you'd find some right there. Anyway, that's definitely on the list. Spearfish Canyon. All right, moving on in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Okay. Let's move on here. Wow, we're already up to five. <laughs> Might be the top 12. <laughs> all right. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's all good stuff. Leaving South Dakota once I got through the canyon, I got to see Bear Butte Mountain and all that. Downtown Spearfish, that was cool. Then I got up into northern Wyoming. Now, this was a drive that uh, I'll remember forever. The Bighorn Mountains on the scenic Highway 14. Now, 14 goes a long ways. Actually, 14 cut through uh, South Dakota, too. But, uh, wow, just a wow factor of 10 on this one. You had the Bighorn Mountains, which kind of skirted along the northern part of Wyoming and the Montana southern border all the way across. You had Burgess Junction, Lovell, Cody, Wyoming. Then got over here to the Buffalo Bill Dam and all that. So I'm going to group all these together as a huge honorable mention. Uh, to it, Do it. If you ever get a chance, go across uh, Scenic Highway 14, going along through Wyoming. Yellowstone itself, that was a huge disappointment. Um, went there at the biggest tourist time, crowded, uh, didn't care for it. Old Faithful was cool to see, but it'd be a long time for I ever go back there. Now, once I got over into Montana, which is West Yellowstone, here's one for the list. Earthquake Lake. Now this is, I never had heard of it, but if you want to see something that uh, Mother Nature created, this is one for uh, the list here. Let's open it up. Here we are, Earthquake Lake. How this massive slide, they had an earthquake of like seven point something, brought down this entire mountainside, clear across this canyon cut off uh, the Madison River and created uh, Earthquake Lake. To me, it, it's phenomenal. Uh, they, there's a backstory here. Never knew about it. Definitely wanted to go back. There's all kinds of campgrounds, all that through that region. West Yellowstone itself was kind of touristy and expensive, but you got out this far, it wasn't bad at all. I would definitely go back 
along the Madison and check this area out more if I had a chance. So that's on the list, Earthquake Lake. All right, let's keep moving. Then I got up into Montana, the, followed the Madison River, went, got up around Helena, Canyon Ferry. Here's where I hit the smoke, <laughs> dreaded fire, wildfire smoke. No one's fault, you know, but it just really saturated that whole area. And it's really hard to film. It's glary. You know, I made the best of it, best I could. Drove up through Devil's Elbow, went out to uh, York, where they had the best burgers in Montana. Wolf Creek Canyon, beautiful drive. Holder Lake, Recreation Road. All this all grouped together as a huge honorable mention. Uh, if you get a chance, follow up. You're right in the Rockies. You'll go right up through there. You kind of skirt along I-15, but you can zigzag off, especially Recreation Road. That's a really unique place, and there's all kinds of camping. You can really get in there. Then we got up way up top, Montana. We started cutting across Highway 2. Could not get in from the east end to Glacier National Park. That was a disappointment, and uh, once I got up there, you still ha were dealing with some of the wildfire smoke up here in Browning and all that, and you could not get in the National Park at all. They had it totally closed off. And then I went ahead and took Highway 2, clear across, and I didn't want to backtrack. going. To, and it was so crowded uh, up there at Glacier National Park, I just did not want to backtrack. So I continued on, ended up Eureka, Montana, way up. We we're only eight miles from the Canadian border. Beautiful little town, kind of unique. Then I had the nice pleasure of driving down Highway 37. And what a beautiful drive. Lake Kukanusa, it was just beautiful. You had uh, Libby Dam. Now, here's one. We'll go ahead and put this on the list. We're going to put on the Libby Dam on the list. So let's open it up. Here it is, the Libby Dam. Look at the size of this thing. And that lake is like 80 miles long. <laughs> the volume of water that thing holds is just insane. And when you're down here standing and you're looking up at this thing, you're going, oh, man. But it just puts in perspective what good old mankind can do but th just a neat neat place there was camping here there's camp along the road recreation areas so that highway 37 if you ever get way up top in the part top part of montana up there like eureka definitely take it and go all the way down cut you right back down to that highway too but that was a good loop i took i'm really happy i took that uh, drive and this ended up way back down in Libby, Montana. All right, we'll keep going. Moving on, uh, once I left Libby, I spent the night around there. And then I, next morning, woke up, it was raining. And personally, I kind of liked the rain. I knew it would be clearing out the skies. Cutting across to Idaho, I was way up in the panhandle what they call the panhandle it's not very far across what 60 70 80 miles across up there it's not very far at all uh ended up over at the dam right as we're leaving idaho that was a pretty pretty place then we entered washington state and we started on that highway 20 washington state highway 20 and here's one for the record books washington state is a beautiful place especially cutting across the high line like I did um, once I got on 20 I hit a few small towns once I got past Kettle Falls this is one for the record books here here's on the list Sherman Pass Scenic Byway the CCC Memorial let's open it up right here when I went up Sherman Pass the Scenic Byway on Highway 20 and I stopped here at places like this I just absolutely love. The history here, I mean, almost 100 years ago, there's people working here to create all this for us to enjoy. And it just really meant a lot to stop here and check. What I like about this, when you look at a view, that's the same view they had 
hundred years ago. <laughs> that water, you could hear it running down through that creek there. Yeah. Then got clear up to the top of the pass, 55, 75. That was just a neat, neat ride. That took about a half a day going up through there because I stopped often. I was in no hurry. Miles-wise, it wasn't that far. This is definitely one for the list along uh, Washington State Highway 20. All right, we'll keep going. Moving on here. This video is getting a little long, sorry. Then we entered. I went through Republic, Washington, Winthrop. Then I ended uh, up in the Northern Cascade Mountains in the Northern Cascades National Park. By far, this was my favorite journey, stop, whatever you want to call it, of the entire summer was this area through here. It was so breathtaking. The views, the mountains, the road, the pullouts, this crystal blue lake, this uh, Lake Diablo and the dam. Driving across this dam, let's take a quick look at this. Right here, when I drove down that little road off the main highway, and I seen the dam, I go, oh, good, I'll get some pictures. <laughs> Let me move. Then as I got closer, check it out. Look at the crystal blue water. The huge canyon view off to the left. The mountains. That was cool. I definitely want to go back there. Once again, Washington State had a lot of restrictions. Can't blame them. I mean, they're pandemic everywhere and all that but I would definitely go back there at a different time and explore this whole national park North Cascades National Park I'm gonna give this like uh, the top three <laughs> one two three right here this is just beautiful if you get a chance get up there and that's still part of that highway 20 Washington State 20 cut through there all right Let's keep going. Then once I left the Cascades, got over into the islands. Here's Washington State Islands. Got Bayview, Anacortes. Just nice. Nice weather. You got the coolness of the water. I was right at the edge of the smoke. This is when I was watching the local news, and the next day they said, Look out, you're going to get the smoke. And they were sure right. It started rolling in. And rolled in heavy. Went through Deception Pass State Park. This uh, Fort Evie State Park. Port Townsend Ferry. Yay! <laughs> Got to take a boat ride in the van. And that was cool. We're going to put that on the list. How often do you get a boat ride in your car? Now up there it's kind of common for people up here. But I was able to get out. Enjoy the view. Then once I got over here to Port Townsend, uh, I had been here before, four years ago, filmed it. Yeah. Plus, I got to spend the night at my favorite Elks Lodge, Port Townsend Elks Lodge. Very, very nice. All right, moving on. Then we're getting near the end of it. Once I uh, went to Port Townsend, spent the night at Elks, I woke up. And it smelled like one big campfire. That smoke had rolled in, and the entire Olympic Washington Peninsula was covered in it. The winds were coming out of the east, blown to the west. The entire coast was getting inundated. Then I ended up over here at CQ Washington. This is high on the list right here. Probably one of the highest. This is at the extreme northwest of Washington State. Let's check it out. I got to stay right on the water. Perfect view. You could see the smoke coming in. It was creeping up on me. But I had a very enjoyable stay there. Could smell the salt water here, the seagulls, all the fishermen going in and out. But definitely, if you ever get a chance, get up here. CQ Washington is highly on the list. I stayed at the Van Rippers RV Park. And there's several up there that you can choose from. Okay, moving on. And then the last stop, 
pretty much where I was going to head on back. I had decided here, this was at, at the end of it, I hit the Pacific Ocean. That was it there, got to see the ocean. That was kind of on the list. Now from here, what I was going to do was I was going to head all the way back down the coast. I was actually going to go into California. Let's move on out of here. I'm going to do a final recap. Let's do this. Let's go back to our list. So we got to see the ocean, then the Oscar B. Ferry ride, and then I headed on home from there. The smokes, the wildfire smokes are just too bad. So anyway, let me uh, hang on. I'll do a final recap right now. Well, in closing, what a summer, huh? <laughs> if you include June and all of it together, almost 90 videos, uh, you guys have consumed, uh, what was it? I looked at the analytics, over 600,000 hours. 600,000 hours of videos have been consumed by you guys. Uh, that and also on the views it was close to 3.4 million views since about the first part of June that didn't include the rest of the year so I think we did something right somewhere it was quite a journey did it in a pandemic we're safe and sound back here at the van cave uh, next on the list the van goes in actually tomorrow a uh, little bit of warranty work nothing major just a few little details and also serviced uh, Total miles uh, this summer is a little over 7,000. And we were on the road for, well, you've seen it, about 90 days. Quite a bit. Okay, well, uh, my famous last words, the journey will continue. Talk soon. <laughs> See ya.